Hey everyone, Percy here. So today I'd like to talk about VST hosting. So if you are a musician and you like to perform live and you want to use virtual instruments, so VST instruments, you're gonna need some kind of host. Now one of those hosting programs is called Nanohost and that's what we're gonna talk about today. Again, it's perfect for performing live with VST instruments, but also for recording. So let's talk about it today. Super C Okay, now using virtual instruments comes with a few benefits over using hardware instruments. Now, of course, using hardware instruments also comes with a few benefits over using virtual instruments. But anyway, some of the advantages of using virtual instruments, I would say number one is price. Now, virtual instruments usually are gonna be cheaper a lot cheaper. Now, another advantage is that they will give you a lot more flexibility. So let's say, for example, that you're a keyboard player. Um, I can take with me on the road tons and tons of virtual keyboard instruments on a little USB stick like this. And of course, I can switch between them whenever I want. Now, how many hardware keyboard instruments can you take with you, really? So it's going to give you more flexibility. Now, as I mentioned, using a virtual instrument requires some kind of host and actually two kinds of hosts. So first of all, we have the hardware host, so to speak. And that, of course, is usually going to be something like a laptop or possibly a tablet. And then, of course, there is the software. Now, keep in mind that some virtual instruments come with a standalone version already. Now, if that's the case, you're set already. You don't have to do anything. But of course, many virtual instruments don't. They don't have a standalone version. Now, in that case, you do need to have some kind of software host. Now, of course, you could simply use your DAW. It's gonna work. But, you know, DAWs also have uh, recording features. They have mixing features and all those bells and whistles that you're not gonna need in this situation. Now, if you don't really need all those extra features, you could also opt for a dedicated VST host. Now, one of those dedicated VST hosts is called Nanohost, as I mentioned. Um, now, Nanohost is only good at one thing, and that is simply hosting your VST instrument, nothing else. And that, of course, makes it super lightweight so very easy on your computer and that way you know maybe you don't really need the most powerful laptop in the world just to simply play some virtual instruments with okay now to download nanohost i will leave a link in the description that link will take you to this web page it's a web page of an organization called tone 2 nanohost is a free application so it's free to download and use as it also says over here so download it now for free so just click this and it will download a zip file. So just unpack the zip file and it should look something like this. So first of all, we have the manual, which again is just a link back to the website. And then we have the 30-bit version of Nanohost and also the 64-bit version. Now you can save this anywhere on your computer. You can even save it on a USB stick if you want. Now to use Nanohost, very simple, just double click the version you want. I want to use the 64-bit version, so let's double click that. Now automatically a search window will open because it wants you to point at the DLL file that's connected to the virtual instrument that you want to use. Okay, now I'm gonna go with um, Wiggle and let's open that. And voila! Now, before we can play, there are at least three things I think you should take a look at, at least. Uh, so let's first go to Convig, and let's take a look at the MIDI in settings. I'm gonna change this to my Arturia Keystep 32. Okay, let's go back to Convig, and then let's take a look at the audio output settings. Um, okay, I'm gonna change the output port to ACO Motu M series, as that is the audio interface that I'm using at the moment. Okay, and then lastly, I want you to take a look at the block size or buffer size, because that is what you possibly need to mess with should you have some latency issues. Okay, now everything's set. Now let's see if it works.
flawless. Let's just try another sound. I don't know why exactly, I just feel like it. So let's see. Flawless. So it works perfectly. Um, I have to say, what did you expect? Did you really expect me to post this video if it didn't? Of course not. But anyway, it's a very uh, simple program, very easy to use, very easy to set up. Um, no latency at all, or at least no noticeable latency at all for me. So perfect, you know, it's perfect for uh, live performances, either on stage or maybe in a, in a streaming session online somewhere. And you can also use it for recording. So let me tell you this real quickly in closing. So a while ago, I did a video on Audacity. Um, we all know Audacity, right? The software. And I asked the question, okay, so is it possible to use Audacity as a DAW? Now, one of the problems that I ran into is that Audacity doesn't support MIDI among some other problems. Um, so you cannot really use virtual instruments inside of uh, Audacity. Now, one of the viewers who goes by the name of, I blame the parents, told me that, you know, there is a workaround and basically telling me, okay, use NanoHost. Uh, and that's actually how I got introduced to NanoHost. And it actually is an option. You know, you can use NanoHost to create standalone versions kind of of virtual instruments and then record those instruments directly into uh, audacity you know so if you want to use audacity as a daw which i would still not really recommend but if you must then yeah it's definitely a very clever option so again uh, thank you uh, i blame the parents Anyway, that's all for now about NanoHost. Go check it out for yourself if you want to. And if you do, let me know what you think about it. Leave a comment below. Thank you for watching and I will talk to you in the next video.